Hey everyone, Steve Weintraub uh, with Collider. I'm here with the people behind Wounds at Sundance. Uh, before we get started, I want to give a huge thank you to Kia Telluride for being a great sponsor, uh, because they're the only reasons we get to uh, do stuff like this, is having sponsors. Sundance is, uh, is expensive. I, uh, I was going to make a joke and say, I'm wondering what you have to do to get the free car, but I'll bet you there's probably a way of doing it. She's like... <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, She's like, yeah. Depends on what you gotta do. Right. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, completely teasing. But uh, so, first of all, congrats on being part of Sundance. Um, everyone watching this will not have seen the movie. Maybe two people will have. So, I hate doing the generic thing, but talk a little bit about what the film is about, and for each of you, who you guys play. Sure. Uh, the film is about a bartender in New Orleans called Will, played by wonderful uh, Army Hammer here. Uh, who is a very charming, affable guy, a uh, very cool guy, but he's also quite shallow, doesn't take anything in life seriously, has a very easygoing life and likes to keep it that way. But one night, uh, he finds a cell phone left behind at his bar, picks it up and looks at what's on it just to see whose it is. And, and he sees some really disturbing stuff that turns his easygoing life into a living nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you get involved? Uh, I am Army's best friend slash most loyal customer in his bar slash we have attractions. Winky, winky. <laughs> um, one of the things is you guys actually filmed in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And talk a little bit about what that added to the film and why did you want to be in New Orleans? Um, I mean... It's based on a novella called uh, Visible Filth by Nathan Ballingroot, and Nathan was actually a bartender in New Orleans. So, um, so it, the, the setting of the film is pretty much very important for the story. It's almost a character in the story. I mean, it's not one of those like postcard films about like, you know, like, oh, come to the city of New Orleans. It's a lot of fun, but, but it's just, um, it was in the novella and, and uh, we just thought, um, you know, New Orleans is such a, fascinating place it has a lot of history but also i always say that like it, it has a very strange vibe it almost feels like it's sitting on a portal to another dimension for some reason so i so it's just it just it's it's just perfect for the film and you, and you see why and there are loads of cockroaches there as well which helps <laughs> the story well, for both of you talk a little bit about filming in new orleans and what that city what the city added to the film um, as Babak sort of just suggested, I I always feel New Orleans is um, feels very haunted to me and old with history and souls that are still wandering about. Um, which the film sort of talks about, you know, the the hollowness of self and what you choose to fill yourself with. And it, you know, I feel like there's so much there to consume and to, um, you know, that I think there's darkness there that you can culturally, that you can, um, I feel like, inherit for yourself mm -hmm. in a way. I don't know if, if you think about the sort of voodoo culture, even like slave culture, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think there's there's a lot of heaviness there along with kind of the the drunken frivolity of it all, which is also something I think we, t we sort of is discussed in the film is kind of like the gluttony and the privilege of that and um you know i just also just love new orleans as a city and it has such a beautiful character and is so unique and gives a beautiful backdrop to to this film plus they have 24-hour bars so after you finish doing a night shoot at 7 30 in the morning if you want to go get a drink no one judges you at all Perfect. You're, you're not saying you ever did that? No, no, no. This is what I was told by Babak, who was drunk the whole time <laughs> he shot the movie. <laughs> um, uh, I am curious, though. Uh, you, you landed a great cast. Uh, mm -hmm. You also had Dakota Johnson. Very lucky. I'm, I'm curious, what is it like in that initial meeting? Talk about that first time you guys met. Uh, and what is it like? Because obviously, you, you are you nervous going in that you're like, I hope they like me? And for you guys, are you like thinking, man, I really hope he likes me? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we hit it up like in five minutes. I mean, I, I met Army first, I think, and mm -hmm. literally, like, after five minutes, we're best buds. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and same with Sassy. We mm -hmm. Skyped first uh, yeah. before meeting in New York. And, um, yeah, it w there was no awkwardness. Some, it depends on the situation with 
these lovely people, there were no awkwardness. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we did have a great cast, and I think yeah. that uh, we got such a great cast because we had we had we had Bobak kind of behind it, and uh, oh, anybody you. anybody who really met with him or skyped with him or talked to him was like, "Yeah, dude, I like you. Let's yeah. let's do this. Where's the shooting? Really New nice. Orleans? Hell right. yeah, let's yeah. go!" And it, it just became like a really. I mean, the movie itself is is eerie and and intense and and sort of a. A, a, a smooth and steady descent into darkness and madness, but the vibe on set was always really fun. Like we, we had a great time making this movie. I'm always curious about the editing process because mm -hmm. that's ultimately the final rewrite. Uh, what did you learn from any screenings that impacted the finished film? And when did you guys actually see it? Was it when it was done done, or did you see like an earlier cut? You can tell them. When I saw it yesterday. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, well, I'll just wait and watch it at Sundance. Like, let's just do that. And they're like, well, no, you have to do a whole day of press before you're gonna get to see it. I go, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll wing it. I'll, I'll make shit up. Like, that's what I always do in press anyway. And they're like, no, you need to see the movie. And I did, and I'm, I'm really glad I did. Yeah. I saw it yesterday too. <laughs> yeah, I think I have an old link. Somebody told me that it's sort of changed a little bit. Um, but I also was like, I'll just watch it at Sundance. And then somebody was like, but the press. Yeah, yeah. And so I saw it yesterday afternoon. Uh, yes. And I'm glad I did too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and the editing process was great. I have a wonderful editor, Chris Borwell, who, sh who cut my first film, Under the Shadow. As you said, it is the final rewrite. And that's how I see the edit. Uh, but it went, it went quite smoothly. And I, I, I ended up making the film I set out to make. and. Mm. Uh, and I'm very proud of it, yeah. Uh, I'm always curious about memorable moments from filming. For each of you, what's the one day that you, when you think back on the shoot, that you'll always remember? I remember we kept pranking the AD. Was it the AD? It was, it was also Bobak. It was, it was really kind of everybody. I, just re I remember yeah. the chalk hand. Yeah. No, that thing. was like, yeah. On the <laughs> yeah I, found, you wanna I found a big <laughs> bowl of chalk randomly like I don't know if it was like weightlifting chalk or, or whatever it was and it was just this massive bowl of chalk and it became a game to see how many handprints I could get on Bobak's back before he noticed so I would just dip my hand in the chalk and I'd walk over and I'd be like I'd be like hey do a quick question uh do what, what was the thing yeah. about the thing and then I and then by the end of it he had like 15 handprints on his back and I filled his whole back and then I was like who else do I get and then I just went around <laughs> set chalking everybody the army's being so friendly today <laughs> yeah. just like constantly yeah it was funny yeah uh we also had I mean all of the days where there were cockroaches on set were memorable just because it was terrifying mm -hmm. fucking hate cockroaches and they smell they smell. <laughs> By the way, the, I deal with cockroaches so little that I didn't realize they reek. Well, oh, especially yeah. like the ones we had. Like yeah. we would have buckets of cockroaches. What, where, but what, there's where a were wrangler. This? There was this was in New Orleans. We, and we also had a dedicated cockroach wrangler. wrangler. You also yeah. couldn't lose one. Yeah. Unless because shooting would stop. Yeah. And you, you would have to, have to find the yeah. roach. Also, I remember the Wrangler being like, you know, what's great about all these cockroaches is they each have different personalities. <laughs> and I was like, my man, you are spending way too much time with cockroaches yeah. if you're analyzing their personalities. Like, this thing needs to, to just be stepped on. Right. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm not down with cockroaches either. Mm -mm. Um, I, have you ever? I tried, I, I, like, after we'd filmed for a bit, we'd all been dealing with cockroaches enough that I was like, I think I'm over my phobia of cockroaches. Like, I think I can do this. Okay. <laughs> Wrangler man, I want you to come over here and put a cockroach in my hand, and that will be me proving to myself that I have truly mastered my fear of cockroaches. And everyone's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, 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 come on, it's no problem, it's no problem. And these things are relatively docile, they just kinda like chill, and then he puts it on my hand, and I'm, and I'm like, okay, okay, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, this is okay, this is okay. And all of a sudden, this thing hadn't moved, while it was sitting in the bucket, hadn't moved in God knows how long, he puts it on my hand and it starts running up my arm towards my face. And I just was like, ah, get it off me, get it off me. And I, just, I freaked out. And uh, I think I reinforced my phobia of cockroaches as opposed to conquering it. Right, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. And uh, thank you for sharing that story. Yeah. Have you ever filmed in downtown LA? Yes. So I was told, I've, I've been on sets downtown LA and they, they, I'm always like, this isn't that bad. And they've said, hey, Steve, why don't you just look down a little bit? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And you look down and the ground moves. Yeah. And it's because of cockroaches and insects and other things. It's so like Indiana Jones. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Well, it wasn't that dramatic, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So you're saying that, newer, that making this was uh, an interesting adventure. It was good fun. Yes, it was good fun. Uh, I want to switch a little bit to uh, get to know your Sundance attendee. I promise these are harmless. A few quick ones. Uh, what t- For the t- two of you, what TV show would you love to guest star on? And what TV show would you love to guest direct? Ooh, you guys go first. No, you go first. <laughs> You're on one of the shows that I would love to be on. Uh, by, by the way, when I do this question with everyone, I would swear to you 75% of the answers are Atlanta. Yeah. Like, for mm. real. Of course, of yeah. course. Uh, but my other one is Patriot. Have you seen Patriot on I have, Amazon? I was going to say it's an Amazon show. I've yeah. not seen it. It's awesome. It's so great and so funny and dark and, and delightful. Uh, Patriot. I would say... I don't know. I'm always bad at questions like this. Uh, can we do Bobak? Yes. Uh, well, I'll go with one of my favorite shows of last year's Succession. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Good yeah. One. it's brilliant. Yeah. That's a good one. Hint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is your version of Succession? Would you do your own spin on it, or would it be... I'll turn it dark. <laughs> right. yeah. Cockroaches everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you want, do you want, okay. do you want to skip or? Uh, no, uh, you know what? Escape of Denimar is really good. Okay. Like uh, do you have a favorite sci-fi or fantasy film? Mm. Mm. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking to a nerd, so I have many, so I don't, uh, I need to think. Um, I can go first. Yeah, go first. Close Encounter. Sure. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's, yeah. Um, 2001. Uh, okay. Yeah, that one's really good. Um, the one popping into my head is Ex Machina, but I would sure. say 2001. Yeah. All phenomenal films. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you remember what film scared you as a kid? <laughs> as they look right at him, but yes. for, for the three of you. I, I know exactly. It wasn't necessarily a film. It was a long music video. That was Michael Jackson's <laughs> thriller, uh, directed by John Landis. Uh, yeah, nightmares for a long, long time. I have to watch it now. The first For a guy who makes really scary movies, that's a very delicate thing to scare how, you. Well, how old I was you? really young. I was like four or five. And my, my older brother, who's kind of mean, showed it to me. And uh, yeah, couldn't shake it off. Um, I'm a massive wimp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw The Grudge when I was 12, which was the first horror movie I saw. And for weeks, <clears throat> I couldn't finish my showers. Uh, I... I foolishly was in the basement uh, and, and like <laughs> The Exorcist came on on television mm. and it petrified me so mm-hmm. badly that I couldn't even move to get the remote. So I sat there in like a catatonic <laughs> state and scarred. I mean, I still, if I go into a basement now, I will just start thinking about The Exorcist. Uh, do you remember what your first movie or TV show crush was? Tiffany Amber Thiessen on Saved by the Bell. I understand. That was quick. <laughs> was that too quick? Did I jump in there too fast? Um, I don't know. I liked. Um, I don't know. I I I never have quick 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 ones to the to this kind of stuff. It's cool. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and Batman Returns. Oh yeah. Uh, do you own any movie or TV show props? Other than like our own, no, just it, it could be your own stuff. But do you own any movie or TV show props? Oh yeah, I steal everything off every movie I do. Like, I mean, how much did I steal off our yeah, set? Yeah. Probably loads. I don't <laughs> even. I'm not <laughs> even aware of it. Yeah, oh, tons, <laughs> tons. Yeah, if it's not nailed down and it's the last day of shooting, I will sneak off with it. Yeah, I take a lot of the clothes. Mm. So a lot of times depends on the if if it's like a big studio thing and everything's lock and inventory, but. On smaller things, if I like the clothes, I'd take them. Did you take anything? Yeah, like some props from, uh, yeah. I, I, I took a prop from this one and one from Under the Shadow. So, yeah. Gonna, yeah. These, just a few last few that are really fast. Are there, uh, have you watched a TV, have you watched any TV show all the way through more than once? Yeah, maybe, yeah. I mean, I've definitely seen all of Parks and Rec, and then I will occasionally go back and watch other episodes again. But I don't think mm-hmm. I've watched the entirety more than once. One of the all-time best characters in TV history is Ron Swanson. Ron yeah, Swanson, yeah. oh God, that yeah. That show is so good. Yeah. I don't think I've ever re-watched an entire series 
of anything. This is going to, I've, I've watched Atlanta uh, twice, both seasons, and uh, first season of True Detective. Mm. Ooh, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen first season of True Detective. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ga- oh, this is uh, this or that. Uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Star Trek. Star Wars. Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad? I've never seen Game of Thrones, so Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. Game of Thrones. <laughs> Han Solo or Indiana Jones? Indiana Jones. Well, my Han Solo <laughs> is Indiana Jones, so... <laughs> That's a little bit of a cheat. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, Indiana Jones. Han Solo. Um, my last question for you guys, for each, of, for all three of you, uh, do you remember what it was growing up that said, I want, this is what I want to do, I want to make movies, I want to be in the entertainment industry? Was there a performance or a movie and you said, oh my God, I want to do that? Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone. You go first. Um, uh, Sound of Music. I've heard that from a a number of people. Yeah, Sound of Music and Singing in the Rain. Steven Spielberg, Tim Burton, when I was 10, 11, all of their films. On that note, I'm just gonna say thank you sincerely so much for coming in the studio. I hope these questions were not too painful. Let's Mm -hmm. see what else you got. Oh, there's there's like others like, what's your background photo on your phone, which I'm happy to. Family. Right. (laughs) Uh, you know, stuff like I that. I fly through these. What else you got? Yeah. Uh, what do you collect? Did I ask you that? Nothing. Uh, <laughs> wait, hold on. Uh, favorite superhero movie? Ooh, pass. I can't think of one quickly. Uh, yeah. You, you, you eat easy one with Deadpool 2. Oh, I was going to say De- Deadpool, yeah, Deadpool 2 because yeah. honestly it's great, but uh, I didn't want to feel like I was playing up to the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and I had worst job you've had. a runner oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. H- handing out flyers yeah. yeah I very briefly sold concessions at a concert and it was terrible um, again sincerely I could ask you guys a million other questions at, for example X-Force Deadpool 3 Atlanta season 3 uh, I believe you have something uh, coming up called Rebecca mm-hmm. when do you start filming that uh, this year no, no, I know. I meant like, when. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we will start shooting uh, probably end of May, June, somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you have a director that I also like with that. Dude, I love Ben Wheatley. Yeah, yeah. just throwing that out there. But listen, I, you guys got to go. All right, um, bye. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you sincerely so much. I really thank appreciate you. it. Thanks for having me. Good to see you, Steve. Nice Bye. To see you.